to see you come out of it looking so well. You're still a very good-looking fella. Well, you've, you've come through it all right to you, sir. Oh, I'm not mate. quite as rugged a game as you. Anyway, we're going to be talking about it at great length during the interview a little later on, so uh, stick around with it. I won't go away. Yes. Jack uh, Rennie. Are you doing an interview with Lionel Rose? Lionel Rose, how are you? Uh, no, I'm doing a, an interview with uh, Jimmy Carruthers here. One world champion at a time is enough for me. Well, no, we've come all the way from oh, well, I, I'm terribly sorry, uh, Jack. This is embarrassing, but this is the man I'm interviewing. I think it's my surprise, Jack. Oh. Mike Willisey. Lionel? How are you? Mike Willisey, how are you? Fine, thanks. I've got a surprise for you because yeah. tonight you're the guest of honour, <laughs> Jimmy Carruthers. Tonight, Lionel, you're guest of honour on our program. I've been waiting for you in another stage, Studio C, to say to you, Lionel Rose, this is your life. Okay. Nice to see you. I think you're still a little stunned. Yes, uh, Mike, I am. All right, let's start. I think there have been few more important events in your life than this one. A quarter of a million people lining the streets cheering you every foot of the way to the Melbourne Town Hall. Nobody, including royalty, the Beatles or the American president, has ever drawn a crowd like you drew that day. At 19 years of age, you're a champion of the world. Within a few months, you were named Australian of the Year, later awarded an MBE for your contribution to sport. An impressive achievement for a, a young Aborigine in a community not noted for giving your people such glory. It certainly was a, a show and a half then. Lionel Rose, you were born in Warrigal in Victoria on the 21st day of June 1948. Your father Roy is a tent fighter and as a little boy growing up you live with your father and your mother Regina yeah. in a shanty settlement at Jackson's Track about 60 miles from Melbourne. When you reach school age, nobody thinks much about your education and your attendance at school is, to say the least, infrequent. Yes. You, you are more likely to be found in the fencing wire ring you build near your home, your fists wrapped in old towels, trying out the moves your boxing father has shown to you. In 1958, you were chosen with three other Aboriginal children to travel to Melbourne to help raise money for Save the Children. Yes, sir. I met Lionel on that visit to Melbourne. It became the first of many. Well, I'm sure you know who that is, Lionel. Uh, Graham Walsh, newspaper yeah, photographer yeah, in those times, right. today Victorian Secretary of the AJA. Yeah. Graham Walsh. Yeah. Graham, you were covering that event for your newspaper then, and I think Lionel wanted to do one particular thing. He wanted to go to the stadium. He uh, wanted to see the stadium. When he heard when I, uh, that I'd done a bit of uh, professional boxing, I became a bit of a hero. And he wanted to be a mate. And we became mates. Yeah, I certainly have been for many, many yeah. years. Yeah. Now, Graham, some weeks after that, you invite Lionel down to see another fight. And his marvellous grandmother, Adelaide Rose, who was then almost 70, hitchhikes with him to Melbourne. That's right. A and she did that regularly. Uh, particularly when George Bracken fought. Uh, I can remember a Friday's off work when uh, we'd look out the window at Blackburn and uh, we'd see two dark figures walking across the paddock towards our place. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and Grandma would, uh, would deliver him. And quite often she wouldn't even stay for a cup of tea. She'd turn around and go back again. Uh, but uh, oh, she was a really wonderful old lady. And, uh, Sounds uh, remarkable. Tremendous dignity. Well, only your grandmother's 86 now and uh, that's a bit old for hitchhiking to programs like this, yeah. but she still remembers her first grandson. 
Ronald was a lovely little boy. Well, thank you, Adelaide, Rose, and Graham Walsh. Thanks for taking your part in Lana's life tonight. Very much, Mark. See you again, Mark. Thank you. Lionel, that first time your grandmother hitchhiked you down to see George Bracken fight, he became your boyhood idol. And he became like a mascot to me. It's Lionel, that's one of our greatest lightweight champions, George Bracken. George. George, I think Lionel didn't miss too many of your Melbourne fights. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mike, he's had quite a number of them. Quite a lot of them. Yeah, this one. Uh, <laughs> and he was your idol? Yeah. I used to take him in my corner as, a, as my mascot. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. What about advice to him, George? Uh, yes, well, I used to tell him a lot that I was trying to help him to, uh, in, the, in the fight game, I knew he was going to take on the fight game. And, uh, Any warnings? Yes, I told him that uh, he'd have to take the uh, ups and the downs and uh, watch out when he's on the uh, going down. Because uh, it was very bad, you know, very bad. Exactly, yes. I think you used to refer to Lionel's father giving him some advice about going into boxing too. Uh, that's right, yes. Uh, his father used to, uh, with no uh, father one time, he used to say to Lionel, well, uh, what I've always said, that uh, uh, when you're going up, on, when you're on the upper upgrade, everyone's with you. And but when you're on the downgrade, uh, you're there on your own. And was boxing the right game for Lionel? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think you gave him some particular advice about that. I'll try to help him in my little small way, but <laughs> I think he's done a lot on his own. I think he even went so far once to say that boxing was the game because it was the only place where an Aboriginal might That's be treated right, as Aboriginal equal. Aboriginal might be uh, well, treated as, as an equal, uh, because uh, without people, we've uh, I've got to start from uh, beyond the airport. Well, uh, I, you know, yeah. I think your advice line was pretty good. George Bracken, thanks very much for joining yeah, us tonight. Mate. When you were 10 years of age, Lionel, you moved to another shack closer to town. You hear about a youth centre in the nearby town of Warrigal, and you become interested in training there. One night in the Warrigal gym, I saw a little dark face pressed up against the window. From Pye Long, Victoria, the man who's been with you a long time now, Frank Oaks. <laughs> I rang you before this, didn't I? <laughs> Frank, what did you do about that little face at the window? Well, Mike, I, uh, I went outside and I brought Lionel in and uh, I asked him to uh, do a little bit of work on the heavy bag and keep warm. And uh, later on I found that he'd walked about five miles from Druin uh, to get there, so I drove him home. And then he started training with you? He trained, uh, he turned up every week and trained very hard. Okay, after six months of training, Lionel, you decide you're ready to fight. You accept an invitation from Dave Proctor to join a group of Warrigal boys going into sale for amateur night. Uh, you're 12 years of age and you weigh just about five stone. Yeah, five, six. But you're disappointed when you find there is no boxer in the sale team your weight and you feel that the long journey may have been wasted. Then you see another boy who's not been matched and although he's more than a stone above your weight, you challenge him. Yeah, that's fine. And how did you go? I lost it, but it hell out of me. <laughs> well, that mystery boy you fought that night disappeared from boxing and I guess has just remained a disturbing memory. Was a disturbing memory. <laughs> <laughs> but this is your life that's found him. And here with us tonight from Hayfield, Victoria, Jim Beaumont. <laughs> So you've still got the red hair? Yes. That's all you remember? Yeah, he looks like the fellow.